I guess I'm gonna just come on early then. Screw it. What's up, friends? How are you? It's nice to see you again. It's been a hot, hot bloody minute, hasn't it? Hasn't it just? Oh, it's good to see you all. How are we, friends? Oh, so nice to see you. I I literally was gonna go live like an hour ago and I haven't used anything here for a long time, so nothing worked. <laughs> Most things still don't work. Oh, it's nice to see you though. And then cake happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Friends, I've been thinking about coming back for a while now and it's nice to actually come back. Not just think about doing things, actually do things. Hey Nick, how's it going? So. I must say some thank yous straight off the bat. Carolina, 31 months. You're nuts. I love you. Pappy for the 23. That's also nuts. Thank you, my friend. K for the 100 bits. You champion. And Carver for 19 months. It was so nice meeting you on the road, man. Having that lesson and everything. That was so much fun. You're currently dressed as Mario sipping rum. You're winning. You're winning, my friend. You're absolutely winning. Oh, mate. Oh, I've missed this. Oh, I'm doing really good. Happy it was lovely meeting you at uh, a Euroblast again. Man, we, uh... Oh, the ads popped straight up, did they? Oh, dang. <laughs> hey, d don't worry. We're, we're still here. We're still here. We're still doing our thing. Oh, it's nice. It's nice to be back properly. <sighs> it's just it's just great to see you all and to be able to chat and hang out again. It's uh, I've been living and doing a lot of things. Hot tub stream went yo, hot tub fund when. That's the that's the only answer I got for you. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I just gave some shout outs. That was the vibe. So uh, it's it's just nice to it's just nice to see. Well, I I would love a hot tub, but that's that's some serious maintenance budget needed for that as well. But uh, yeah, thank you for sticking through the adverts. As usual, uh, adverts should be muted if you're a sub uh, to the channel. So that's a thing. I was going to enable YouTube subs, but um, apparently I can't. I think I've played too much of my own music, which means I'm ineligible for m memberships, which is. Awesome. Cheers, Google. Love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally was looking for it. It was like, wh wh where is it? It's like, oh, it could be because I have lots of copyright claims because it's my music. Because I, I just don't get it. I just, I, 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 I've given up at this point. <laughs> I keep having ideas. And then it's like, no, no, you can't do that. No, 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 no. No, why would you do that? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, Jesus! How, what, ah, many, many numbers. Oh, Complaining James just came through with 10. Bro, holy heck. You rule, you rule, my friend. I will get that hot tub immediately. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, Shex, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's great. Like, it's good that there is a system there, but uh, yeah. Hey, hot tub fund, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, friends. Oh, and someone just uh, gifted a, uh, a sub to Meps as well on the side of that. I think that looks like it was a separate thing. So that's bloody incredible. Thank you so much to whoever did that. Facelessly. Aww. Finest keyboard drummer. Yeah, yo, if you're not in the hot tub, I'm not in the hot tub, King. It's, it's an us thing. So, um... Yeah, wow. You already level 3'd me, my friends. That's that's insane. Cheers to you all. Cheers to you all. It was really hard to go away for so long. And uh, basically, you know, get off this world that we built together over the whole of COVID and everything. I'm already wanting to change my... Uh, a whole bunch of stuff. I think I might need to change my overlay and get that face. Just a little bit non-central, you know? 
<laughs> it's just so many things that I ended up just not getting done because of essentially laziness. But yeah, no, I mean, like, we did so much stuff together. And then we just, and then we just stopped because life happened. And I never wanted to be the streamer who uh, just streamed here and there and then got back to life and then everything else just died. Like, I always wanted to be, I wanted to take you on the road for so many things. I took 15, 20 kilograms of my rig everywhere and there just kept being something. Internet's not right. No space, socially not possible. You know, just, just all these things. And I was just like, man, I, can I just, can I just do the thing? Like, this is my thing, I wanna do it, you know? And uh, yeah, no, apparently. <laughs> But it's nice to be back. Uh, it took a while to get back off, uh, you know, get my mind back in the game. And uh, yeah, it's just been nice to, to go out and do some touring again, to be honest. I meet so many of you in person. Uh, there's been so many, I, I barely, I can almost hardly recount them all, but they were all so special. And we've got the photo album in the Discord. We've got this huge, huge uh, bank of that. Phoenix coming in with 22 months of subbing. Uh, that It's just blowing my mind. And it, there's so many of you have kept that going on the side. And, uh, you know, while I haven't even been here and it's just, it, it means so much. But either way, it's just so cool to have you all here. Uh, you're excited to peep the Ruins performance, mate. I am so glad. I'm so looking forward to that. Like, honestly, it's going to be nuts. I'm really, really, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to that because I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah, true. I had enough to worry about being on tour. Also, you know, some shit went down on tour, which kind of stopped me from being so, like, on the front of it all. Uh we had a we had a, a crew member get shot in Dallas, which was nuts. We were it was twenty meters, twenty, thirty meters from our RV. Just a drive by in Deep Ellum. As he's walking across the road to get pizza. Gets shot in the leg. Uh comes back on the tour within forty eight hours and stays on the tour. Bullets still in his leg, no surgery, no nothing. Twenty two grand debt, thanks to uh an insurance glitch and fucking just nuts, just nuts. So at, at that point, it was like, okay, it's now it's just survival. Because um, we were having a great night out. We just had such a great show in Dallas. It was nuts. I got to meet uh, so many cool people. Derek Br Blakely was there. Uh, he's an amazing bass player and uh, got to meet just such cool people. Yeah, I think the GoFundMe hit like 17 grand and I think it was like 22, so. But I think, you know, that's still incredible that he made $17,000 from crowdfunding. It's nuts. It's absolutely terrifying. Most expensive piece of pizza ever. <laughs> Man, uh, Verno, our touring bass player, he, um, he just started sadly humming pizza time <laughs> on the night that it happened when we were outside the emergency room and it was all sinking in and he was just like, oh, I'm going to sell this. I, it was like... And then he kind of looked up at us and he realized what he was doing and I realized what he was doing and it was the first time any of us had laughed in hours. It was fucking hilarious. I, I wish you were all there in that moment because that was an us thing and I was like, this is so layered. You don't even know how much we've done pizza time. Like, for those of you who are around in the many, many times we've had pizza time happen. I don't actually know if pizza time is even working. I don't know if blurp works. I don't think it's good. I'd, I'd like to make sure it does work, but uh, maybe we'll check that out. This is, this is gonna be experimenting, getting back into the flow and building a new drum mix. Um, I wanna show you, I wanna see if this works first. Let me just press, press a quick button here. But, Hey! Oh, it's on top of everything, of course. How do we get me on? Yeah, there we go. So um, this is actually really cool that I've gotten this working. This is actually a different computer. Um, this is my laptop uh, that I have set up in front of me as well. I'm a, I have a two computer setup and I have some really cool audio gear that's making that work. I don't want to dwell on too hard, 
Um, but basically, yeah, I'm going to offload all of my audio processing onto my laptop because I've got two audio interfaces and a full-on ADAT interconnect between the two. So I have access to a multi-track multi, uh, on both sides. So, um, yeah, we can totally do that. I'm going to play a little bit, mix a lot, and then we'll just set the stream back up again from scratch while we do that. Um, we'll have a lot of fun with that. Casual friends imply that ranked competitive friends exist. <laughs> and clearly you haven't you haven't networked before, my friend. Okay, thank you for the hundred. I can't believe we're on a level four of on off like I haven't done anything to deserve anything, but you're 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 gorgeous. Um, yes, that was kind of what that uh, BNH photo video stream was about. I was uh, it was an Antelope sponsored event. Um, as part of my agreement in terms of receiving Antelope Audio equipment, I agreed to do a certain amount of publicity that was sort of uh, to be defined as we go. So that was going to just be a couple of YouTube videos. And then this opportunity came up. I was like, let's just make that one of the things. And then I'll still make that. And I made this video and I tried to edit it. And I was like, this is boring as fuck. I'm not actually doing anything here. So, um, yeah. Peter Rain has spent zero seconds watching Manny and Drum. I love that. Yay, I got a new level three. Oh, this is cute. Look at that. I love that. You've only watched me for two days. I saw it's got to be more than that. Thank you so much for the subs and the bits, my friends. It's become a bikini hot tub now. I I, I think that, uh, is that how it works? Um, hang on, can I? I've watched myself for six days. Does that mean I've streamed for six days? That's actually quite a long time. Yeah, keyboard drumming is so much fun. I forgot I did that, if I'm honest. I forgot that was even a thing that like I did. It's still doable, always. Um, I think I want to do some live drumming today. And especially, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you as to why I want to do this. Um, my computer has not been able to handle the amount of crazy shit I've been trying to do on streams, you know, like snap cam and all this visual stuff and everything and the stuff that I really enjoy messing around with, right? But my drum mix, the way that I tend to mix drums, it, it was just getting so, that was also like pushing as hard as it could with like really low latency. The two things happening simultaneously on one machine just is not, it's just not how I want to do it. And I can offload stream encoding onto my ATEM as well, but it's much more limiting than using OBS. I'm really much more comfortable with this. So, mate, bikini hot tub keyboard drumming stream. I, I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it, but I, but that, I mean, I'm gonna have to find a hot tub that I can play a keyboard, keyboard drumming kit in that's not gonna break on water contact. Yeah, Brown is also an antelope guy. Yeah, yeah, we've um, he actually helps uh, him and a a, uh, a guy that I played some music for both uh, helped me get the antelope communication going, and uh, and as a result, I've then um, developed a relationship with them. Um, but yeah, uh, just to clarify as well, that was something I was already very passionate about because I didn't realize just how awesome these units were until I started I started really looking into them way before we actually started talking. And because of the ability to loop back and, and everything that I can do on stream with all this stuff is, I, I couldn't, literally couldn't do it without it. So yeah. Um, the green matching bikini. Actually, the kit isn't fully green. I've actually got the Guru Toms on here. Let me show you what it's looking like. Let me, uh, let me do this. It's not the cleanest setup I've got. You can't really see it there. Can you see it here? No, guess you can't see shit on my stream. Um, but you can kind of see a brown tom right here. Yeah, I've got the guru setup going on. I'm, uh, I've got a snom going on over here as well. Um, the first floor tom is actually a snare. So I'm doing a bit of a hip hop -y thing at the moment. It's not really a metal setup. I'm kind of still mucking around with the whole jazz fusion hip hop -y vibe just because it's fun to do when I come off tour. I, I kind of have a hard time getting immediately straight back into metal. Um, but yeah, uh, I have also got an actual floor tom. Um, 
on the shelf so I can switch it out at some point. But um, yeah, like it's just, you know, you know how I love to jam. So I, uh, and the thing is I would have just copied my mix, but for some reason, some of my plugins have different names on my laptop than they do on my p PC. So I literally can't copy projects back and forth. I swear I've tried everything. Uh, I'm, and it's so stupid because I should be able to just pick up one project on one machine and then continue it on the other. That was the whole idea. But uh, FabFilter uh, has different things in mind. So I'm going to wipe my whole main computer and start again. And hopefully then it will all be in line. And then I'll just keep reinstalling shit until eventually the plugins all work. But, um, but yeah. So the cool thing is that the drum mics are coming in across two interfaces, but they both are ADATing everything back and forth. And so now, hypothetically, I should be able to, this is on the laptop, the first 12 drum inputs are actually coming in from the interface that isn't plugged into this computer. Oh, sorry, not the, not the first 12, the first uh, eight or nine uh, coming in on one interface, and these are coming in on, on another interface. but. That was working just fine before on the other side. So this will be the first time I actually set it up properly. And I'm literally starting from scratch. Um, so I'm going to start naming my mics. So I've got the kick in mic that has a condenser and a dynamic element. I could take the... Uh, what's this face? I could take the, the mix I had from the Malian Drum Academy stuff as well. And... Uh, then I could just work with that and, you know, change up some of the stuff. But I, I want to try and start fresh because I feel like I got, I used the same mix for like two years and I just, I just kind of fancy a fresh start. I kind of fancy seeing what happens if I start uh, with a new mindset, what kind of different sound will come out. Um, what's an acceptable level of latency? I would say like, I would. I really want like five or six mil max, and that's unattainable. I, I have to live with like seven or eight. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I feel like new mix, new me. Yeah, yeah. I'm also. I kind of need to do stuff like that because otherwise, I just. I don't know. I, I just get. I get cold feet. I get bored. I um. It's kind of ridiculous, actually, the amount of things I start and stop just because I'm like, ah, uh, bored now. So the goal is I'm, I'm going to still do the same style of processing uh, where I will group my my kick. I'll group my snare because I, I know I like to do that. I know that works. I can keep it mono. That can keep some of my channel counts down internally. The toms, you sure as fuck can't because you do, these do get panned. So that's going to be a stereo group. And then all my, uh, oh, Snom is actually going to go to snare group. It should really go to the Tom group. I'm not sure how that's going to end up working. It means I've lost my ride mic, but that's all fine. Yeah, ADA, ADA on these devices is incredible. It's all synced by BNC. It's, it's super strong. This will still be the overhead spot. That's where I'm going to start. Always start with my overheads. Start mixing that. Um, and then we'll have a room. We'll just color these a nice color. I'm just stoked I found a way as well to share my screen from my other computer that you can all actually see. Um, I'm using something called OBS Ninja or Video Ninja, it's called. And uh, if you're ever trying to do meetings and like hangouts on OBS, um, this is perfect for being able to actually like have calls but every person can come in as a browser element in obs it's really 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 good it's totally free totally awesome um so yeah a snom is a snare drum that is tuned really low so it can be a tom but then you can turn the snares on and it can be like a <laughs> you'll hit you'll hear it in a bit um try to do as much stuff on the drum bus i try to do nothing on the drum bus i mean zero percent I, uh, I don't want that bus to have to do anything except for be a volume meter because it's so easy to just squash the whole thing at that last stage and then you lose all your... That's the only thing you can do there is really... I feel all the decisions need to be made before then and it's, it's really it's just there to be able to hit a button on export and export the drum only or mute the drums by just having a bunch of buses. Honestly, I, uh, I would not want to... 
I, I, I used to do that all the time, just try and do all my compression and everything through the through the bus, but it just doesn't it just doesn't make sense to, to me anymore. Mike Malley and Drum Library went. Well, I'm still working on that signature tone sound, you know, like having that thing that's identifiably like, ah, yeah, that's Mike. Because in my mind, it's still not sonically a thing. It's except for the fact that I do zappy kicks, pretty much. Yeah, I'm intending to do what I eventually ended up doing, uh, which was to run parallel, uh, to run a bunch of parallel compressors, but like specifically for, for specific things. Like if I'm looking for a blend on the kick, a blend like, uh, you know, half real, half. We'll, we'll just see. We'll just see what it sounds like. Um, I, re I don't want to have any preconceptions apart from the fact that I know what my mix structure is that I'm familiar with in terms of what looks good. And even just, just making them fresh and just staying away from any presets. That's that's going to be nice, I think, because I also have a variety of different uh, plugins available to me. I'm actually not sure if I installed one of the uh, one of the channel strips that I bought, uh, and if I didn't, I should probably get it. Yeah, so I've only got the Lindell there. Where's my SSL one? I have the SSL, but what was the other one? I might have to actually install something. Um, What's in Plugin Alliance? I might have to have a look at this real quick. I actually think that there's something I, I, I picked up and forgot to use, and I actually want to play around with it. I want to see if I actually bought it first. Uh, what's the name of the Plugin Alliance uh, download manager? I'll find it. I'll find it. There it is. Installation manager. Yeah, so it might be the Focusrite one. It might be the Amec one. So I'm going to just take a peek at what I own. I have my whole list here. Yeah, it's the Focusrite one. Yeah, it doesn't look like I actually ended up getting that other one that I wanted, which is okay. Yeah, it's, I don't want to buy anything more. I just, uh, I just want to, you know, download what I actually got. There was also the Alicia Alpha compressor. I picked up a bunch of deals. I never fucking used them. <laughs> like, why do you? Why would you do that, right? Why, why be like that? There's also an 1177. Hot photos of my sister. Oh God, no. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I got a YouTube sexy back. That's cool. I did a thing in uh, in Restream to block that, so that's fine. Okay, <laughs> I'm just going for the VST3s, download and export. Let's see. I, I do, I definitely do. Um, oh, that was meant to, uh, that was meant to actually install it. Download and install was what I wanted. Um, yeah, so I want to make the academy into a much more um, a much more beginner-friendly area. Um, I think the uh, the polymetric side of it is definitely a good la a good starting point for anyone who's confident in doing some double kick playing. You know, just some kind of linked double bass drum. Um, I think I think it's. It definitely takes it up a notch, but and so it's definitely in the intermediate ca category. But yeah, I have an entire plan to make a make a whole like actual beginner through to later. I I, sh I kind of wish I'd started with it, but I was I was kind of into starting it in a different spot, so ended up doing it at that point, and I'm and I'm happy with it. But yeah, it's uh it's on it's in the plans. Do I have this eye lock? Yeah, no. Yeah, I had that the whole time. I did have to buy a second eye lock for this machine a while back. Yeah, no, I. Uh, it'll it'll take a little while to make. This is weird. Why are you? Uh. 
This sucks. This is this is why I end. I I forgot why I don't um. Why I don't make music. This is going to take a while. I'm going to go back to uh, chatting and then I'm just going to click buttons randomly until everything says it's activated. Trying to manage two computers, let alone one. Uh, every archetype is going to be like this? Seriously? No, come on. Yeah, it's, it, it's, I think it might be that I have to like, I have to actually go into the, the license manager. I think it might be that. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I did all of this. But it's it's I'm gonna be I'm gonna be clicking buttons for a while, so so we'll just hang out, I guess. Now I remember why I don't try new things. Because <laughs> it's long. Because who wants to spend... Ah, oh, here we go. Six new effects and one new instrument found. I think that did it. I actually just got to the end of it. Oh, no. P uh, Paul is the OG. Paul is the one. Let's see. What have we got? Have we got the focus right one now? Not there. That's... It's in EQ. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I thought I would give this a try, actually, because um, it looks really cool, and I, I hear it's good. I know the SSL one. I know what I'm doing with that, but I want to try some different things. Let's see if we can work this out. This is confusing to me, because I just don't know focus rights. Uh... Oh, this was free? Oh, that's cool. I'm so glad I spent money on it. <laughs> Okay, so we have control of all the V gains and THD. That's fucking cool. Um, so we got our gate here. Can be an expander. That's going to be my my first port of call. So input. It's not just left to right like I'm used to. We have in here input, and then we go to. Is the order of what goes where something you can control? Like the signal path? Filter to gate. Filter to comp. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, now this, this doesn't appear to... Okay, I'm starting to understand it. We've just got a comp and a gate. I'm guessing it's going to go gate into comp. It should do, at least. It's just confusing to me that it's right to left. Um, and then if we want to filter the key of the compressor or the gate, we basically can send filters to one side or the other. Turn them off. Compressor, gate, gate and comp. Audio. What does that mean? What do you mean audio? <laughs> I thought this was audio. Does that mean external? I'm confused now. <laughs> we'll work it out. We'll work it out. You've just got to focus right. So there's usually a, a uh, something to be able to switch all the channels to random. Yeah, there we go. Random channel all in one. So we can play with that.
It definitely looks like it's... Or we'll have a listen to it. I, as long as I have like some starting point for this. Um, anyway, I'm going to need to record some drums and make sure this actually works. So uh, I'll go ahead and start preparing for that. I'll throw these into a folder. We'll call them drums. I'm going to change out of my flip-flops and put some actual shoes on. We'll get there. We'll actually play some cool sounding stuff and hopefully we'll get a nice mix at the end of it. And we'll have a good hang regardless. So I had two ideas for this and one of them was to be productive and actually do this thing that's going to enable smoother streaming and more experimentation down the line. Or it was just going to be, hey, let's sit and hang out and watch some drummers. So I think we'll do this today, and next time we'll sit down and watch all your favorite drum performances. So keep that in the back of your mind for next time, whenever that is. This is really sick. What is this? Oh, it's Vola. I thought it was. I thought I recognized it. OK, let's switch this. Oh, no. I closed the laptop. <laughs> That's going to be interesting for the screen sharing. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> uh, my, my stream deck's over there, so I can't just press easy buttons. I wonder if we can restart that. Yay. <laughs> oh, well, I could restart my laptop midway and we'll be fine. That was, n that was nuts. That was so silly. But the good thing is, is that everything should still work fine. How low a sample rate should we try and go for here? 32, that's gonna be ridiculous. Let's try. 128 and go from there so that's a really low number here you know having a four four milliseconds output means i can play with about one one to one and a half with my plugins and still be in that five i'd be so happy I'm probably gonna need to make sure that my uh my fans are getting ready to you know work hard Hey, what's up, Joe? Cubase, yeah, auto saves all the time. Uh, assuming I've actually saved a project, though, at any point, which I have yet to do, so let's do that. Um, new drum mix 2022. Switch drum mix 2022. Now it will. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, this is the thing. I was having to do 256, and that was killing me. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to jump over to the other machine and move this over. And we'll go have some fun. Play for two minutes through the worst sounding drum kit ever. So, I am over here now. I am going to see if this thing works. Ah, oh, I forgot to run a program. That's fine. Um, let's see, can we hear this? Right, let's uh, take a look at what's going on on the screen. Because this, what you're hearing at the moment is the mix inside my antelope. This is just what the onboard effects sound like. I've, I've built a drum mix in there. So let's just have a look.
That'll do. Yep, looks like the CPU is peeking out hardcore over here. That's pretty nuts. Hmm. And suddenly I've lost the ability to play music. That's handy. There we go. I would uh I would be happy to. That could be fun. Yeah, I'll pop them in for sure. We'll uh we'll see what happens. Let's just make sure we've got level and the right level and everything. So for one, I mean this is a second computer, right? So I need to actually make sure that I'm receiving it in the right place. So I'm gonna go ahead and Mute everything. Just gonna go into all the groups. Just turn them down. I just I just want to work at one thing at a time. Just listen to overheads. Make sure they're good. Haven't done even any panning on them, so we'll start there. And they sound like overheads. Let's hear the room. That sounds like a room. I wonder if Asgio Guard is on. That looks like it's not on. Um, we can turn it on to high. Hey, Julian, coming in with a raid. My dude, how are you, my friend? It's nice to see you. How are you, man? Belfagor, it's been a hot minute, my friend. How are you? Ah, it's great to see you. Go give Julian a follow, won't you? He's such a lovely champ. How are you? How's it going, Ardok? I'm just uh, playing around with some drum mixing at the moment. I'm first time back streaming in months, honestly. So, uh, yeah, I'm great, thanks, man. How are you? For those who don't know, uh, my name's Mike. I play drums in a band called Monuments, and I also screw around with lots of fun stream projects, session drumming, I'm an educator, and all sorts. A jack of many trades. Ardok, thank you so much for the follow. So uh, yeah, I'm just jumping in and having a look at some of this stuff. I've actually got a really cool tool I would love to turn around and make use here. Um, what I have, uh, this is back to my other machine here, is actually my... Um, there's, I have this thing where I can like have the music kind of turn off automatically, but uh, I need to just change what feeds that. I think I know how to do it actually. It's AFX. Twenty three and twenty four. If I feed that from my music buses. Oh, this is going to be sick. This is going to be black magic moment number one. All right. No, that's the thing that gets shut down it's the other way around. This, ah, uh, yeah, no, I did that wrong. Oh, well, I'm not going to bother with that too much. <laughs> that could have been really fun if that had worked. It actually needs to be where the music's playing through it. Oh, the music is playing through it. What? Now I'm confused. Huh. Oh, maybe it wasn't 23 and 24. Maybe it was... Um
There we go. Oh, now I can't hear it at all. Okay, that was a mistake. Okay, I'm just breaking my setup at this point. So uh, yeah, ignore me. I'm gonna stop uh, getting distracted with weird things. Hey, Pariah. Lovely to meet you too, buddy. Thanks so much for coming out to Austin. That's so sick. That was a hard night. We just had that massive issue the night before, but we had that great toast to fill up on stage. That was a beautiful night. Come and take it. Hey, thanks, Joe. Oh, man, I appreciate that. That was such a fun time making music like that. So essentially what I was trying to do was to set up something where, uh, where listening to Spotify would basically shut up every time I pressed play on uh, Cubase. Uh, I used to have that stuff really smoothly set out, but because it's now a bit more complicated with the two machines set up, it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit impossible. Oh, a slow sarcastic clap that didn't play thanks to Blurp not working. I haven't touched it in forever and it doesn't surprise me that it doesn't work. So apologies, but I'll, um, I'll give you one. I wish I had a reverb that could just like fly on there. <laughs> Let's actually do the drum mix. Let's look at that. So here's what I just recorded. So that's our overhead channel. Let's find a nice bit of beat. This will be good. Just set it up. We could basically just do the whole thing. Outrun, oh mate, no worries at all. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out. So let's see if we can obviously, oh, let's get rid of that hi-hat for now because that needs some serious work of its own. Well, that definitely sounds compressy. It has a mix on it as well immediately. That's so cool. We can hit it a bit hot. I, I track everything a bit cold, so. That's nice and sweet. That's a nice top end boost. I see what's going on with the uh, with the EQ. I'm gonna go at like my crunchy frequencies, the crunchy mids. Smooth that out just a bit. Be a bit less surgical with it. How does this sound like really slow with a really fast attack? Really slow attack, really fast release. Ooh, that's got a nice transient cut through. Hey, this sounds pretty cool. That sounds pretty damn mean. Yeah, well the plan is basically to then uh, make be able to play with parallel. So first I've got to gain match it.
But yeah, with overheads, in order to like jump up and above like a, a thick RMS of like the thicker the music is, the more gain reduction, the more you want to raise that floor up. But yeah, that is a lot to be honest. Depoking that snare, that really fast attack. Sounds great. I'm good for now, but thank you. What's up? BH Buzz, thanks so much. It's nice to have you here. I uh, I love Frederick. I, I hung out there for a few days before and at the end of tour. Um, nice place you got. You got some loud crickets. You got some real loud crickets over there. Trying to imagine how this would fit into a mix. It's definitely. Hey, thanks for the follow DM. Appreciate you. So this is that filter to compressor we were talking about before. If we turn it off. So just seeing if the compressor is actually being triggered by the sub frequencies. If we filter it out on its way into the compressor, then we... Uh, potentially we're then having a bit more open uh, compression, but it doesn't sound particularly different to me. If we hammer it. Oh, that's oh, this is so that you can monitor the filter. That sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, the kick is it's an overhead, so it's not going to matter too much. It's good. Thanks, Andrew. How are you? Just uh, getting back into the back into the vibe, having a bit of fun mixing, starting a new uh, EQ post. Again, I just go hard with these moves just to see what they actually sound like. I don't know if it's pre, where's that going to be? I guess it'll be before the uh, compressor. I'm okay with it being post. Ah, uh, yeah. That's really nice and warm though. Not that I would want to do that with it. Sounds really cool. It was nice hearing the bass from it. It's just gonna cloud the mix up though. So there's the filter in. Okay, I think we've covered everything. The only thing I want to check is if uh, there are any deeper settings in here somewhere. Oh, that's just the Plugin Alliance website, which says money. And that's not what I'm interested in right now. <laughs> it's uh, sometimes there is... Ah, oh, that's helpful. I actually wouldn't mind having that just a bit smaller. Hey, you saw the digital tour bus video. Um, I didn't. I didn't. No, the guys were really mean to me about that because uh, Brown was tour managing the whole thing and totally could have just emailed the venues and been like, hey, do you mind if, uh, guy, you know, preparing them for the idea of someone cooking on site? But every time I turned up there, they were like, oh, we've got nothing. We had no idea. And then instead of helping with that, it just uh, they just took bets on whether I would use it or not. That was kind of harsh. Also, I bought a bunch of plates and bowls and cups and stuff and... Uh, and everyone just uh, kept using them and leaving them dirty, so I never wanted to use them. So, no, I just had to take the chance with takeout all the time. 
But, you know, I, I survived, which was good. <laughs> uh, at the moment, I'm quite liking this focus right. I'll let you know if it's my favorite once I've played with the expander. I just won't do it on overheads. I'm happy to start with this for now. The room mics are tricky in here because it's just in my ceiling. But yeah. Nah, it's all good. It's all fun. But yeah, no, uh, I, did, I didn't ever use them. Uh, they're, they're, they're unused in storage. Ah, this is actually way too small. But yeah, they took they took bets and uh, some people won because I didn't use it once. But funny, funny enough, Brown bought a coffee maker that he uh, didn't talk about. That he never even took out the box. Starbucks beat beat it big time. <laughs> so it's already really filtered, and the problem is because of that kind of natural filtering because it's above the um, because it's above the. The duvets, it's it's really cloudy, and so it gets very. But it has a nice low end energy. It's quite quick up there. And uh, he he does when he's at home. He didn't on that tour though, because he never took the coffee maker out of the box. Let's go smash. I actually need to hit up Misha about getting a, a, a bag of this coffee. I really want to try it. If that's not Hulk smash, I don't know what it is. Holy shit, that's dying. Ooh. So by crushing it, I'm obviously losing all of the, um, you know, the work I've done removing the symbols from it. I just want to keep the energy out when I bring the overheads in now. That's doing what I want it to do. Hasn't got too much lower end in it. Oh, hello. Oh, you brought, you brought more anyway. <laughs> I have more lemonade from Carolina. Thank you, my dear. Appreciate you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want I want to get it. <laughs> go K is in go K. As in go K. No, it's not even sparkling. Actually, wrong. It's a sparkling lemonade. It is a sparkly one. Ooh. Get ready for some burps chat. <laughs> Hello Twitch to YouTube. Hello YouTube from Twitch. What were you saying about a 5K bell filter in? Oh, the Dan Tompkins tea is sick. Although, Bird and Blend, we discovered, that's a real, real tea company. They are so sick. I mean, Dan's stuff is great, but Bird and Blend, whoo, we're loving that. So, uh, bottle of water, bottle of water. There's a lot of low end still that can be pulled out of those rooms. I don't want any wet, any dry in there. Yeah, the problem with sco getting Scoopy with it is that you lose the air from the room as well. So uh, it works hypothetically, but... Ah, oh, no. I'll show you what I mean. Where it's isolated, let's find five. It'll be about here. You lose the... You lose the um, symbols, but you also lose some of the bite of the actual breath of the kit. So it's okay. I, I'm fine with just working with it, you know.
Let's take it to that crash bit. I gotta stop pressing that by accident. I'm okay with it. It's it's not sounding too sharp to me. Like it's it's working. Like it's not jumping out to me, at least not on the headphones and I don't want to throw it through speakers just yet because it'll cloud your whole. But I'm liking this focus right. I think I'm going to stick with it. I'm getting used to how it works now. Easy to use. Thanks, Paul. That was just the first thing that came out of my uh, my drumming face. Now this, I might even try the um, Tiesto on it. Sounds good. And now we can pin some of its pokey nature back. Nice sounding hats, honestly. Those dry hats. Okay, there's definitely too much darkness going on here. Now that I'm uh, listening all this stuff. I'm not saying it's gonna go. Definitely gotta cut it down though, otherwise we're gonna really struggle when we do this. We're gonna have to do some uh, boring work on here. We'll just go one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and save myself a hot minute by um, selecting every channel that doesn't have. Except for the rooms and the overheads, because they're just there as placeholder channels. Um, just go ahead and load it on all those other channels. Because I feel like I'm going to use it on everything, so we might as well set it up on everything. There we go. And now I can go into it and uh, set all the channels to random. Now we've got the whole uh, modeling thing working nicely. So this is uh, this is exactly what we're gonna what we're gonna show right now. It's gonna be the uh, the kick blending. Um, well, I'm going to start by assessing the um, the expander, um, and like I used to filter at source. Problem is, is that then the actual kick source is it's also the same kind of energy that you have. You've got a lot of low-end energy, which is actually useful for the dynamic control element. We can kill it later, but filtering at start means we don't have access to it. Um, at this point. Um, basically, I want to use it in the expander. have to go all the way to the top of the threshold to actually get it to do its job properly. <laughs> nice.
Interesting, the hold doesn't seem to be doing anything. We can do it all with, with rare release though, I'm used to doing that. It's working just like the SSL kind of word, it's it's doing the job better than most of the really technical gate and expanders, it's just like easier knobs just kind of working. It's cleaning it up how I would like it to. I then usually do a little bit of dynamic control on it. Not too much at this point because I like to slam it later. We can also get our final gain at this point. Just want to see what it's actually doing. It's really fast. Really, really fast. Even the 70. And then we can do some tone shaping. Normally I would get... Um, Fab filter out at this point. Interestingly, the filter is not actually changing what the expander is doing, which is really handy. This is all I want from this, essentially. I quite like the sound of this EQ, so I'm just gonna have some fun with it. Focus it around six. That does the job. <laughs> yeah. He's prob they're probably going to put me in big trouble. So, uh, yeah, th I tend to do this with my um, kick in. Really, mine's a bit weird because I've, I've got two in mics. It's a, it's a dynamic and a condenser in the same module. So I tend to just use the dynamic as an out mic. So it's the same mic we were working with. It's just got a dynamic and a condenser capsule in it. That's so awesome of him. But yeah, I, I just wish him all the best. I'm probably gonna, l I'm not sure if I'll lose the subs as I have this sub mic as well. That needs work to be awesome. We also need to kill everything that's not, um. I have to get my sub out to see what that's actually doing. We can actually lose a lot of the transient from that and be absolutely fine as well. I'm gonna definitely do a, uh, a check with my uh, sub turn the mic off and just have a listen to it in there. Ah, uh, that's, that's doing it. I'm having to use EQ as filtering, which I'm not so much a fan of, but it's working. Oh, that's got some thump to it. I'm into that. So then that's our uh, uh, that's our sub and our top. And then I'll try and fill out the middle. It 
Sounds nice and open though. The low end, there really isn't much sub there, so I'm not really worried about what's happening in the at the bottom. I haven't, I haven't no. Your subs went night night forever. Oh no. Um, I don't know what analog obsession plugins are, but uh, that's really cool. I mean, at the moment, I'm just I'm kind of I like to build a mix around one like. I love channel strip plugins, and so like, and I love the sound of these Brainworks ones as well. I've been meaning to do a mix with all of these. Um, I think I tried it in the studio, and I was like, oh, I don't get it. So really, uh, what I focus on is just not being too bloated in the in this this range, but I I need to make use of this energy as well. Hey, Triple X, thank you so much. Thanks for gifting that forwards. That's so kind of you, my friend. Thank you. It's actually not too bad. I don't need to cut it out. Oh, that's live snare. That was an HHG steel snare. Um, it's made by a, a guy who uh, goes by the brand HHG from Philadelphia. Uh, Dan, Dan Drumstone gave me that whole kit uh, for the tour, and that snare was astonishingly sick. I absolutely love it. Welcome to the sub club, Emma Grace Guitar. I really appreciate that, my friend. Thank you so much. So I think it's it's 500 I'm worried about here. And seeing as I didn't actually need to do anything around the 200 there, I think. I'll have to check that later, and I will probably do something on the bus to control that later, because there's going to be some crossover. Um, I'm going to times this by three to get to, like, 500 because it's this stuff. I want to control a bit, and then we'll go ahead and uh, expand as well. This is the one I need the most natural character from. And no, I'm not I'm not gonna pin it like that. I just wanna hear how the attack curve sounds. Go, we want fully slow. Hey, Hamanu, 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 Hamanu. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, no, I uh I think it's great once you've got the thing that you want and you know you're happy with it, then you're so set, right? Um, yeah, that George Levery mid-range knock. I think it's, I think it's, I want to see how he, I've got a project basically, um, I'm going to record something with him in Middle Farm, hopefully in December, and uh, I'm going to see how he tracks a kick. I really can't wait to see how that goes. Um, there's so many things he does that are just so well at the, uh, so sick at the end stage. I can't wait to see how he works at the, at the tracking end. Hey, Low Earth. Good to see you, buddy. I'll go ahead and boost a bit of top end here as well, because that can glue quite nicely with the condenser. This is a bit spiky in the top end. I'm gonna go ahead and work that one with more of a parametric.
That's a hell of a spike there. I love the THD. I just, I love what it does. We can actually cool that down a bit on the way in. It's just because of that. It's because of that really sharp um, spike. It has introduced something pretty nasty. But yeah, these these headphones are not the best for picking all that stuff out. It's just because it's a sharp curve that I'm uh, doing in zero latency mode. What's up, Dukes? Yeah, I love be feeling like I'm at a console. Honestly, it's so much more fun. There's way too much 200. It's just a start. At the moment, it's just uh, kick and kick and overheads and room. It's a good starting point, though. Tuck the whole kick in together it will help a lot. not going to parallel compress with that, that's for sure. Just gently. Just to pull the tones in together. It sounds quite nice and open. It's not anywhere near as uh, crazy as what I had going on before. See in a little bit, don't you? Let's get some snare going. Mute the snom for now. Check phase first. I should. I did this at the uh, at the input stage. So. Or did I? I did, but that still sounds wrong, which is very weird because that just means that my phase is out, which is a positioning thing. So fuck it, I'll just, because that suddenly has low end. this had a phase flip, like a 90 degree phase flip on this one, but it does not. Freeform phase maybe? What the hell? What? What is this? What am I doing? Why would I want to do this? Oh, 
Oh, it's rotating the frequency on an EQ basis. Oh, Jesus. No, I don't want to. I don't. I do not want to do that. That's fucking cool that you can do that, but. That's ridiculous. I just want to do a global. And I can't remember. I have something that does it. I just don't remember what it is. It literally just has like a 90 degree 180. It's really simple. I also have um, in phase, but I'm, I oh, it has live as well. Which hasn't added any latency, which is very cool. Let's add uh, the bottom as the side chain. Take a peek. What's going on here? This the face profiles are completely different, aren't they? This is the one I'd be the most concerned about. They're so different. I feel like we landed on quite a good thing. I just really don't want to add much. But yeah, it looks like we're good, actually. That's cool. Let's get that in phase at the beginning of the chain. Great. I'm going to need to change that loop so we lose the snom. I'm peaking it. I'm just trying to get it above the overheads for a bit. I should probably just pull the overheads down. Or use the listen mechanic. That's what it's for. That's what it's there for. does it. Now I feel like I'm on a console. I feel like there's something going on in like There's definitely a lot of this that needs to be flubbed out. Flubby! some expansion going on. Yeah, this is fun. It's a really good expander. There's only one who uh, just doesn't understand expanders in general. And if, you, if there's anything you don't understand at any moment, just feel free to ask. I love to share my process. I am always learning as well.
See, that hold seems to be working just fine. That works well. That'll allow us to go pretty hard with compression. Now I wonder, can I do my favorite compression thing with this? I probably can't. I'm probably gonna have to go. I don't know if I know if I want to do that extreme tone thing, but um, you have no idea what you're looking at. Um, do you do this? I, I, do you use other tools like this or like you know mix in general? Because I can show you kind of the pathway of what's going on now i didn't understand it when i started the stream but uh yeah i feel like i'm there now <laughs> hmm. hey mips is back Whee! i missed that one let's go oh that's nuts That's kind of cool. That's just the dry. God, there's so much. I really like that 200 knock. I just don't want too much of it. So I'm filtering on the way in and then I'm choosing which part of that bell I want to boost. And then I'm trying to get rid of all the honky stuff. But this is without the expander. Essentially, we're trying to get rid of bleed. So when we do things like boost the top end, we can actually have some fun with it. Well, that sounds nice, actually. Then we don't get so much cymbal bleed. We have to be careful with it, because obviously this is just a soloed source. too high on the faders here so we're gonna give ourselves some headroom here now I can hear what's jumping out that I don't like This is kind of the technical end of it, but yeah. You can hear something in that I really don't like. Hello, there you are. That sounds a bit nicer, a bit more balanced. We're gonna squish, squish the bottom snare anyway. 
expansion time. We need to make sure we get ghosts here, though. If we if we lose the lose the ghosts, it's all over. The snom is a snare drum that's tuned like a ton. I'm just having fun here. I'm just uh, I'm just stoked to be able to do this kind of stuff and just experiment and chat at the same time. It's really 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 fun. I am no expert though. I'm just fucking around. I'm literally trying like a new drum mix from scratch. Basically, just trying to get a more natural but cool punchy mix going for just. And also so that I can, because this is actually on a second computer, I'm streaming from a completely separate machine. Uh, but I have, uh, because of the way I have my audio interfaces rooted, I have access to my drum and other multi-tracks across two computers, same exact audio. So I'm just, I, I was really scared of playing with it. And I realized, well, the only thing to do is start again. And why not do that on stream? So, yeah. That's got a nice squish to it. There's still a, a, a frequency in that. And this I'm really disliking. Yeah, it's actually just a snare drum. There's just a big one. Malianosaurus, what's up? still hasn't added any latency somehow. That's amazing. Let's have a look at uh, what happens if we do some Pressing the snare bus. I'm I'm going to go uh, parallel on this. I'm just raising it above the overheads to hear what's going on. Let's game match that. That's got the wing that I like. So I've gotten the, the transient. Um, I just want to keep a little bit of the front end spike that I gained from the slow attack on the snare top. Oh, and this is just for the parallel, because this will be the fully comped. This will be the dry, which isn't dry, because it's had like individual compression on, but... I like to have something that compresses up that spike of the transient of the actual snare and then something else that woofs back up so you get that kind of punch in the gut feeling. And I can also glue the stick definition together here.
also just playing with um, it's off the right of like underneath my face but like the thd knob like that's just the distortion from like the analog knob and i just love turning it to max most of the time it does increase bleed but it just distortion sounds great I'm going to have to shape this a bit away in, I think. I'm going to lose them, and I'm just going to... I just don't feel like it's filtering well enough on the way in for me. This is for the kick sub mic. Uh, oh, God, it's so big, I can't see anything. Oh, now it's full screen. Fuck it. This is my speaker that sits in front. I'm looking for a high pass. And I, I honestly, I can't. This peak is where I'm getting problems from. I like it, but we've got a lot of that already going on. So now I'm just going to calm down the curve until I've got like a nice even amount of it coming out. Analyzer. I just want to see post. That feels right. Still feels like too much. Ooh. Now we're breathing. That makes me just want to turn it up. This has a lot of good characters to it. Yeah, I'll track with all of this live, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know how this is going to work for tracking. Realistically, this is just for me for, for... This is honestly just for jamming at this point because... The idea is that I'm streaming and I'm messing around with something in computer computer one and I'm doing the processing on computer two. So the question is going to be, then what do I track? How do I track? How many audio lines do I have access to in the current project I'm doing? Am I tracking in one machine and then sending it into the other one later? I That workflow, even just how do I even see both screens from over there is still stuff I ain't worked out yet. But I know that the way I like to stream, the amount of stuff I like to run in terms of visual effects, um, bits and bobs and whatever, when I'm trying to do a kick-ass audio stream and a kick-ass piece of music and I'm streaming from the same machine, I'm just in trouble. Like, I just can't, my computer can't do it all at once. So uh, I'm just offloading and doing the hardcore work. I was going to do this the other way around originally, to be honest. But um, yeah, uh, you use the Sheps parallel particles uh a plugin a magical plugin to use on kicks i don't w uh after you cut out some low mix i'm guessing it's doing some um i guess that's doing some kind of magic to like you know some kind of saturation kicks obviously way too loud hey loon nearly two years and I'm all the be better for it. So now I'm playing with the overhead, uh, making it glue with that snare a bit better by making this honestly just compressive. I really like the sound of this though. I just love how much energy this room's adding. And again, we've got no real master compression going on. What will happen when we 
do do some uh, some of this. I always throw this at the end of the chain, and then I do throw the side chain filter up a bit so that the sub that mic doesn't trigger it so hard. That's adding that familiar lid on the drum sound that I'm used to. I was getting a bit pokey with those uh, kick and snare, but I want to be really careful with it. That's fully mixed in, by the way. The tricky thing with the snom is going to be that it's doing two things at once. It's a, That was it as a tom. So uh, I'm actually going to do... I'm going to cut this whole thing so that I have a better... Um, a bit a bit of better program material to um muck about with uh, i'll go ahead and just glue that all back together so that cuz i turn this i hit that and then it waits for a while and then i start hitting it as a snare so this way i can kind of take the bit where i hit it as a as a tom and bring it just closer to the bit where i hit it as a snare and i can do a bit of a closer loop the more playing I do on it. What if I move or change drum mics? Then it all changes and we change appropriately. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it it I want it to change. I want to I want to embrace change. It's also this is the worst mic for this ever. It's a, it's a D12 on that snare. <laughs> it's it's hiding down there. It's it's the only thing I've got that's not too big. I'd, I'm really running out of like perfect mics for this. I've got something else that Adam's left here, but I don't want to another borrowed thing that can disappear because I do want to be able to be kind of consistent with it for at least a little while. Really nice low end. Problem is there's not much of the, the top end energy there and there's so much bleed that we might actually have to We're going to have to DS the crap out of it just to be able to use it for its top end. Might have to filter to gate. So the kick doesn't trigger it. That's kind of working. Yeah, it's that old vintage D12. I might have to go more gate with this one, honestly. That's what it's going to be listening for in the filter. That's much cleaner. The kick's not triggering it. The stack's not triggering it. Take care, my dudes. Uh, have a great Sunday roast sesh. Uh, hope all is well with you, my dude.
So it's cool. Let's see what we can do with the top end. We're going to need a longer hold and release for the tom side of it. Sounds kind of cool. I can live with that. Oh, we need to fix that gate, though, because it's opening up. I want to play for it, damn it. Let's do the toms, and then, I, and then I'll jam through the thing. Because um, I literally just played drums for, like, two seconds, and then... Uh, this is going to be technical again for a bit, uh, because... Most of Tom mixing is compression and EQ, and if you have too much cymbal bleed, if you're if you're trying to make big moves on it, you, you've got to get that expansion right. So, because I don't have a drummer who can hit, go hit Tom for me, I have to make myself hit Tom for me. What's up, Dutchie? Ah, it's all good. It needs to be a consistent hit, and I've got I've I've done it myself here, so Appreciate it though. Also, it really helps not having the actual drum be hit in the room. If I had a set two room setup and they were completely isolated, then it, I could. But you can't be in the same room as it, and and it actually work. That works. Not too harsh because we want some dynamics in it. We'll test that in the flesh. Herlet or Harriet? Uh, I haven't heard of him. This is going to get another filter on the gate. Get rid of the china. Oh, wrong side. Top end. Uh, that one. Listen. That'll do it. That's helping. Hold it. Lot of top end bleed there. Bloody empty forty one. Guess we're DSing. Oh, it kills so much of the actual transient. Let's
Oh shit. Yeah, I gotta be really careful with that. That's killing a lot of drum transient. And then my favorite. My secret weapon. My sub mic on my floor song. I still haven't found anyone else who does this, but I love it so much. Again, not liking the limitations of the filter in here, so we're gonna. Th Actually, I, I could just fucking do it here. I mean, it was working nicely, but I didn't realize it would be so transient focused. Don't need the attack. The stick, the stick definition is not coming through in this, so it doesn't matter. We just got to make sure it only opens when I want it to. You got it, buddy. Let's just get the character right, the envelope. That's nice. The other nice thing is, is that like, you don't have to pan the uh, low end so strongly as the top end, and it still makes it the kit feel a bit more together, the subs a bit more mid. So I can just literally do that. And I'm not so... So worried about what's going on there. The snom ghost notes aren't coming through at all. I suppose they never will. That's fine though. That sounds so funny, so silly. Um, Tom tone check, I guess. Tuning's all off, but like. I like that 6K thing. And pulling a little bit of m low mid. That sounds nice. It uh, definitely needs more compression though to glue it together. I'm gonna need to focus in on it a little bit more. It really jumps through the mix when you do it right. Isn't it interesting how much reverb it sounds like it has in such a tiny room? Uh, in the mix, it's a great thing. glue it with the overheads always. That's great. I wish I could just copy those settings. But it's okay. There we go. Was the move?
Yeah, that's too much. <laughs> How is that ever going to match? Yeah, I've got a I've got a drum bus uh, compressor on, but it's very gentle. Just pushing into that snare one a bit too hard, but it needs to be in the snare one because I like the character that's coming out of it. That's cool. We'll just do that floor time and then we'll be golden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How sick would that be? Flip it and it actually like switches its routing. That, that's, that's some uh, pro moves right there. Working smarter, not harder. I've just got to build a button that does that. <laughs> I love that. There's so much. Ugh. For that. Doesn't need anywhere near as much, but something in there I hate, and I've run out of EQ bands for it. So I guess I'm just gonna throw one in here. It's fine. It's probably just because it's so low and it's jumping out to me. Tom 2 needs more gate. Another uh, compressor limiter on the actual toms. So <laughs> that'll do. So now it's time for fun moves. Oh, oh uh, no, not quite. What was... What's... Uh, what gate opened there? Something's pushing... Pushing bleed in a way I do not like. Let's go through the uh, Tom mics and find out. Oh, that's the fourth one. No, it's not. What's up, Connor? Yo, thanks for coming down to that. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. 
I have another thing that I love to use. Subsynth. This uh, thickens out my kick sub loads. Got to be careful with it though. Actually, that works quite nicely, just straight out the bat. That's nice. Does a lot of good stuff. It's just, uh, it's a synthesizer, but it, it just makes loads of nice uh, harmonics. With, without. My one's just a bit thin, because it's like an eight inch paper cone, you know? So that just gives it a bit more of that rubbery oof. I can either hear it with the uh, speakers on, to be honest. Cool. It's very natural compared to what I used to do. Should we jam for it and see what it feels like? Uh, let's see how the uh, s and let's find out what buffer size we can run at on this laptop as well. Let's see what um actually let me check something. Actually, I, I want to change. I've I've recently just found you can just do that and that's that's really nice. You can just get rid of all those stupid desktop icons at like one button. Um, what was I gonna do? So looking for this this widget here, because um, that kind of controls what kind of power I've got access to on this laptop. That's sound. That's not power. What's wrong with you? Why would you do this to me? Power options. There you go. Uh, it's on the it's on the high performance one. That's fine. That's what I think it's best for. So, yeah, we'll jump over there and have a little play. Yeah, sorry for that feedback spike. I just conveniently forgot that I was monitoring my own microphone. Um, yeah, let's have a listen. So I'm uh, still have no way of actually looking at that machine from here directly. Ex I could only look at it through OBS and that will be really hard to make any kind of moves, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. But, in general, I can also do... No, I can't. Oh, yeah, I can. Fuck it. Just need to t press one button and I'm going to get access to that here. Hopefully. There we go. Yay, there we are. That's the familiar look, isn't it? Oh, that's two mixes at once. That's going to have my uh, AFX mix as well. Oh, that's really fast. That latency is great. Indeed it does. This is, it's a balancing act, you know, and when you're the one person doing it, nothing. I also feel like the, uh, the toms in general are just a bit too... Oh god, there's no way I can <laughs> there's no way I can look at that and actually work on it. Christ. I'm literally just looking at what you're looking at. Just trying to make a general move.
That's my uh, Byzance uh, vintage 20 inch crash. Absolutely love that. into it i feel like the snare is probably detuned it's not biting like it used to i've just been playing on it a lot yeah let's see what that does I love it. I love it. It's totally doing what I wanted it to do. Needs quite a hat, but otherwise, it's got that dry, funky vibe that I'm like really into. So, um, yeah, I think this is a win. I kind of feel like maybe jamming along to some kind of classic tracks some stuff that's just fun to play to um i'm gonna i'm gonna try it with something a, a little bit indulgent uh from things that i've uh like before um because this is the kind of thing i'd want to play along with hexes I could try some of that stuff. This mix is definitely not so metal.
Yeah, I would love to have just a fusion set up and a metal set up just at all times. That would be so fun, but I don't have the space. I would need more interfaces. You need so much to be able to run that. Like that's it's so very very wasteful to do. But uh yeah. In an ideal world, if money no object, this studio would look crazy. <laughs> I would have uh I wouldn't have screamed when I found out that the thing I wanted to build was like 80 grand just to get started. <laughs> this is a bit blurry as well, isn't it? Different camera in front of me, so it doesn't autofocus. It doesn't retain its focus like it used to. Really happy with that though, as a as a concept of just going, new mix, fuck it. New, new, new me, new year, new me. It's not even a new year. Thank you so much. So, it, Scott. Oh, dang! <laughs> it's nice to hear from you, man. It's nice to, it's always nice to hear from you, my friend. Um, that was a tune called Seven Ways by Jason Linder, uh, Lindner, by the way. Uh, it's got Mark Giuliano on it. It's uh, from my, the days when I discovered Giuliano and I just never stopped listening to the same few songs by him. It's one of those guilty pleasures. Not that such a thing truly, truly exists. I'm gonna migrate back to my, uh, my desk now. There we go. It's nice to just be back in the vibe, having some fun, hanging out with my friends. And it's nice to just jam, always. Ah, <sighs> good stuff, good stuff. This has been a lot of fun. Ah, all good. Uh, you'll see those messages don't disappear because uh, it's restream that like pushed them over from YouTube. I'd much rather just have that though. It's fine though. We can always delete them here. It won't, um, but just can't time out or delete restream bot because that will stop the whole the whole multi-stream thing from working so but yeah sexy bots for a sexy mic <sighs> this has gone way smoother than I thought it would being able to run run a couple of computers together um, also that latency was awesome I didn't need any more I see my CPU is like peaking I see it's jump it's it's maxing out right but that's the thing, it's running at four milliseconds latency and it wasn't throwing any clips. So that's cool. What's up, Amateur Panda? Nice to have you here. What's up, Nolan? It's nice to have you here too. Cheers to you all. Cheers to you all. <sighs> well, that's the first bit of two computer stuff I've actually truly done two at once um, oh I've only just started on the one that you brought me <laughs> you two don't need to bring another one <laughs> yeah yeah I recognized uh, I I just uh, I know that sometimes with handles that uh, some people don't like having their names just uh, shout it straight out but it's nice to have you here um, for those who you don't know uh, Andy was the absolute legend uh, who very kindly helped me with my website and some of the coding that makes the integration of the educational stuff actually work as well as it does. Um, I was diving through those embeds, uh, Andy, and I was remembering our fun sessions that we had uh, making that stuff up when I made another another course. And I freaked out at one point like, oh no, it doesn't work. But it turned out there was like a tick box that you have to untick that says restrict the width of everything to 960 pixels. Turn that off, everything works fine. I just forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, nice to have you here. Just been playing with making a new drum mix on uh, my other machine. I've actually, you'll love this, Andy. It's just very nerdy. This is this is my laptop here. Uh, it's a bit of a poopy uh, screen cap. But uh, what I've got is this computer has the USB access to one interface, but my main computer has access to the other one. But they're both interlinked with ADAT. And, um, yeah, I've totally gone nuts and uh, 
interlink them in such a crazy way so that I can basically this this whole routing matrix is just mental but yeah so it means that like these preamps from interface one now go out of the ADATs but then from the other interface which I've got remote remote control of here as well that's the awesome thing as well all these interfaces they're both controllable from either computer this all networked so these preamps go out of the ADAT as well so both machines have access to all the preamps so I and then if I want I can just like record the wet lines the dry lines whatever the hell I want it's fucking awesome it's uh, yeah that routing matrix is, a, is an eyesore it's absolutely mental um, a lot of this is like you know effects grids so when you just look at like what the computer is recording here uh, two of them from one mixer that's the one we're hearing now this one's like an alternate mix that I can give you but we're just listening to my mix they go into the first four recording uh, channels because that's how loopback works right that's how you hear what I hear and then uh, preamps of interface one and then ADAT inputs of interface two and then the uh, it goes the other way around on the other interface it's uh, uh, but the channel counts the same. The channel list is the same. Again, I'll lose the mixes so it looks cleaner. And the AFX. Uh, computer recording. Oh, no. It did it again. Uh, yeah. The first 12 ADAT inputs. And then these eight preamps. Just the other way around. And then also just some bonus lines from... Uh, from the other machine so I've got so I can like play some mixes back and forth so I can quickly and easily like monitor things down the line it's mental it's absolutely mental I have gone full blown insane with this stuff fab thank you so much for the resub I really appreciate that thank you my friend cheers my dude yeah it's it's really mad that I can do all of that with Th that amount of direct monitoring and then if I want to I can just unmute the drum mix which is just which I've built over here and that's just got loads of uh, this this is all the drum live inputs doing with all the, all of its own effects um, like it got distresses all over kick drums and stuff and uh, I ran out of buses but uh, yeah lots of expanders on like snares and stuff this and so that was that first mix I played you before we actually started uh, the mix when I was like just jamming so yeah yeah it's it's nuts I I do too much all the time but this is just me getting back into it and trying to focus on the things I actually want to do not the things I can do because otherwise I'm just I'm just doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff rather than actually being creative so the purpose for this sound is that I want to write more stuff for my solo project and I'm actually going to be releasing a tune from that quite soon like I've actually that video that you saw me track in Middle Farm, like that video is now done. Uh, I'm just making some artwork up and I'm chatting to Minel about co-releasing it with them and putting it out on Spotify as my first actual solo piece of music. And um, I'm really proud of it. I'm really, 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 really proud of it. In fact, would you like to watch it with me? Would you like to check it out? Let's see if I can find the dang thing. Let's set it up. Go on, let's play it for you.
I love that the uh, laptop's just there in the background, which is the same view you were watching. Oh yeah, I love Marco so much. This session was so over the top, having 414s on all the toms as well. Like, such a flex. I love it. Vintage 414s as well. It's my dream to play this stuff live with a sick band. Oh no, it's an SM7B, a vintage SM7B. I think it's just called the SM7 actually. Don't see many of them these days. Now you got four. Oh no, four is gone. I think Pete actually, uh, yeah, Pete wanted to, that just to make people talk about it because it just sounds the same, but like, <laughs> as far as the hi-hat's concerned, it's such a flex. Yeah, full four and fours. Heck yeah. So yeah, that's going to uh, come out soon-ish. But uh, sooner than that, something else will be coming out. Um, yeah, I love I love like bringing the pedal hats up. For, it's really all about the pedal hats. I always struggle with like I don't really need the loud shit higher. It's the it's the pedal hats, the crisp crisp metronomic stuff. That I want to bring the fuck up, but um. I'm really proud of that. So now it's just a matter of like locking in the artwork and just putting the damn thing out there. I'm really, really, really stoked. But thank you so much for the kind comments. I'm uh, very, very, I'm ver I feel very good about it. I've got another tune that I want to potentially have remixed by another guy, uh, maybe George even. And then I want to write some more of it. I probably want to do some of that on stream, to be honest. That's kind of why, why I'm in this mode is that that's the side of me that if I'm just trying to have fun as a musician now, like I just my my mind and my 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 soul is there. So I and I because it, it kind of then whenever I come to do monument stuff or something metal, then that feels fresh. 
I don't want that to not feel fresh. And after as much touring as I've done, I just want to, I just want to like feed into that world a bit. And I think it will help my metal playing. I think it will open up my metal playing so much. Um, thank you so much, Andy. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I really want to. It's all about transferable skills for me at this point. It's about follow my heart and trust that it will improve my playing in some direction. It will, it will, it will guide my my way. If you know what I mean. Um, but I'm definitely, definitely into writing some of that on stream with you guys because that's uh, that's something I really love doing. I've actually got something cool on the keyboard side that I've started a, a process of technically that will allow me to use the laptop as a uh, synth engine and a sampler engine for the Nord and interconnect it with the keyboard. Um, basically, I've put my Antelope Zen Go interface on that and then I've sp diff that into my main system. So I've just got a single uh, phono cable. It's not even a proper uh, optical cable. It's just like, an, it's just like uh, you know, an RCA phono hi-fi adapter that's just and and SB diffs just working perfectly on it. it must be like a really good it doesn't look like a good cable but it clearly is a good cable um so that's just then piping my stereo mix from the from the keyboard behind me which is here and if i do it all the way you can see my interface there so um yeah i'm gonna then find a way to plop this laptop there i'm probably gonna pick up a new piece of software called vst live try that out because steinberg's basically made a main stage uh, and I've been looking for a good Windows version. I have this license for a thing called Gig Performer, but I tried it, I just don't like it. And the cool thing about VST Live is that you can build set lists, you can run PDFs in it that can synchronize with iPads. Uh, so I can run like sheet music or like chord sheets in it from my, when I do my function stuff, and then I can just run, uh, that can then control what patch is then selected inside the Nord, which will be way better patch management than I currently have on it um, for set lists and then I can just choose which modules I want to use. Um, and th that's going to be really fun programming that stuff in and opening up the keyboard loads and, and having multiple sound sources going. I'm really excited about that. Um, and then that playing more on the piano is going to then benefit the shit out of all of my uh, drumming as well. So, And then I can write. Writing on stream is fun because it, that whole project has all just been about committing to an idea early and just running with it. Uh, that's the only time anything's ever come out well is when I've not ruminated on it. If I've stuck on it for too long, then it's gone. The only time it's ever moved forward is when I was just making decisions and just going like, cool, that's the song now. And I only feel like I can do that on a stream these days. I just don't feel that free of heart to just spend time just writing things. I'm so busy thinking about all the other things I could be doing. So it's a nice thing to do while hanging out with you and then doing it there. Hey, Mojo. Yo, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'm actually chatting with David about doing something at the moment. Um, formative stages, but who knows? More drum videos might be in the works there. Could be fucking amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That Damar video is very close to my heart, so I really appreciate that. Um, a symphonic death metal band. That would be cute, wouldn't it? That would be really cute. Um... Yeah, I, I just feel like I'm I'm just still just starting my journey. Like I keep standing in my own way, and so I just want to have some fun. And, and you've all been so supportive the whole time. I feel like I can be really vulnerable, like in terms of just making mistakes and just having fun, being like, "Well, I'm learning." You know, I will admit, over the years, over these last few years, I've been. I think I've spent more time worrying about what I've what I do than I care to admit. Thank you for the follow, Mojo. Appreciate that. Um, I've definitely been in a bit of a funk for a lot of my streams. You've probably seen it. I'm like stressing about something behind the scenes, what I'm doing, overthinking, is what I'm doing actually fun for you to watch? Uh, and other things like that, you know, just letting stress take the wheel a bunch. And I just don't want that to happen again. And that's kind of why I haven't jumped immediately back on. Because it wasn't like I was just waiting for the time to be right, but I was waiting for me to feel like, yeah, I can just do this and not worry about it. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's tricky. I'm sure you all know how that feels to, to overthink practically everything. I think it's all also just after effects of pandemic life. But um, yeah, 
it's cool because we wouldn't have this we wouldn't have this vibe we wouldn't have this space i wouldn't be able to do this kind of stuff in a place like this without um without you all being around now nah, i'm so grateful that you were that you were there that was such a good vibe it was uh there was a lot of good good points to 2022 as well i mean that whole tour went really well you know in stasis touring went well uh, it came out there's lots of good shit um lots of cool things to focus on but i won't lie self-management is a big problem for me has been for a long time and yeah i think i, f I feel like i'm definitely taking the break after tour before coming back has been really good for my mind yeah I can't believe you didn't come, man. We, we, I couldn't say because it wasn't fair on him to say what we had planned. Not because we didn't have it planned. I just wanted to see him, but I knew that there was a 1% chance if he even showed up. And we vibed and maybe maybe we did it. Because I know it happened with Periphery back in South America and everything. Uh, but yeah, I... I uh, Okay, I feel for you there. If you were if you were literally in agony, then that's totally fair enough. And there are good videos of it. But yeah, for those who don't know, Chris Barreto, the, the old vocalist for Monuments, came up and sang with us on a whole bunch of songs. The whole show is available on YouTube uh, to watch. It's the Brooklyn Monarch. Monarch in Brooklyn. Uh, Monuments Live New York. You can just see the whole show. Uh, Chris is out absolutely audacious and wonderful. And, and we chat loads, actually. We, we had like a four hour long phone call last weekend. Um, the closest we've been in forever. We want to do jazzy side project stuff together. Uh, we have this one idea that we started working on back in 2014 that it's still in my head. Uh, it, he's really passionate. He remembers it. He's still passionate about it. Um, we've been talking about maybe getting him on here, doing more Lockdown Lunatic stuff. Speaking of, I'm not just going to keep writing it without releasing it. The plan is to put Crockpot out on Tuesday, uh, build the assets and everything on Monday, and just throw the damn thing out there, because we finally got the approval from everyone in the video that we, we featured a bunch of friends' likenesses, and we just wanted to get their actual approval before putting it out. Once that's out, I'm going to keep moving on. All the things back in the back end of the chain, actually getting them finished and out. Uh, revisit the stuff with Josh, work out the release strategy for that, uh, the textures one, and... Yeah, we've uh, we've been looking at doing a, a, a bit of stuff with Chris. He has a technological limitation of only having access to an iPad at the moment. And that's a problem because making music on an iPad is tricky. But he's making loads of tunes with it. And there is a version of that VST Connect performer app that could allow him to pipe into my session uh, over the internet. But they haven't, Cubase Steinberg haven't updated it. It's like the old version 4 that was buggier. And I don't think you can run the version 5 that I have. I don't think I can just downgrade it in a modern DAW. I think I'd have to go back to my version of Cubase 10, make sure that that's like downgraded. I don't really know how to do that. But if I can pull that off and not screw everything else up, then fuck it. Yeah, I, can, I think I could totally bring him into the session. But yeah, yeah, we've uh, we've he's got an idea that he came up with a while ago, and and I wanna I wanna flesh it out, I wanna surprise him with it. So um, yeah, it's it's really fun. But yeah, there's so much collaboration and fun that can be done, and I'm not just gonna endlessly write songs that aren't gonna get released as well, because like there's literally no point. It's fun to do, but it'd be nicer to actually have them listenable. I mean, it's a it's a fucking crime that I didn't just put Crockpot out by now. That's been done for so long. It's actually so stupid. <laughs> like, because I just have never put a song on DistroKid before, basically. That's all it is. Um. But yeah, no, you're totally right, Pete. It was really, really great getting uh, getting in touch with him again. That was the uh, That was the one. That was the big moment. So, my friends, at this wonderful juncture... I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for hanging out with me once more. And I'm going to raid my friend.
it's going to be Mo. He's going to be playing his Mario thing, but he's always doing fun stuff with Novena in his band. He's the bass player for that band. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's insane at Super Mario World, so it's a different vibe, but give him give him a chance. I'm sure you'll love him if you haven't seen one of his streams before. He's a lot of fun. I'm going to be watching on my uh, on my little phone as I turn things off in here and I uh, get myself chilled out and ready for a nice sleep. I'm not sure what the schedule will be for streaming just yet. I want to be regular with it. So for now, I'm going to say Saturdays, Saturday evenings, playtime for Mikey. Um, and everything's on the cards. So just tell me what you want in the Discord and I'll make it happen. Thank you again, my ab you absolute legends. It's just so nice to hang out with you and... Um, I'll see you all soon. Take care.